the S-400, a.k.a. the SA-21. You've probably heard the name if you've been following the Russian-Ukraine war. This is Russia's top-tier air defense system, the kind of weapon that gives pilots nightmares and acts as a major power play on the world stage. But how much of its fearsome reputation is real and how much is just hype? Well, today we're going to cut through all that noise. This is the S-400 threat brief, and we're going to break it down how it finds, fixes, and finishes threats from hundreds of kilometers away, all in less time than it takes for the real thing to get set up and ready to fire. So first, let's get to know this thing. The S-400 Triumph, which NATO calls the SA-21 Growler, is a mobile, long-range, surface-to-air missile threat. It officially entered service back in 2007, designed as the high-tech replacement for the legendary but aging S-300 family. And its job is to defend a massive bubble of airspace from pretty much anything that flies. We're talking stealth fighters, strategic bombers, cruise missiles, drones, and even some types of ballistic missiles. C. Unlike other systems that might be really good at just one thing, the S-400 was built to be a jack-of-all-trades. It's a single networked battery that can deal with complicated, multi-layered attack all by itself. It didn't take long for it to get the reputation as one of the most advanced air defense systems on the planet, and it became more than just a weapon. It became a tool of Russian foreign policy. Countries like China, India, and even Turkey, a NATO member, all got in line to buy it, sometimes ignoring serious pressure from the West, but what actually makes it so special? The secret is how all its different pieces work together like a single well-oiled machine. To really understand the S-400, you can't think of it as just one truck that shoots missiles. Like all SAM systems or IADs, um, it's a system of systems. And you can break it down into three main parts. The eyes, the brains, the fist. So first up, let's talk about the eyes. An S-400 battery has a whole family of advanced radars to watch the battlefield. The star of the show is the Big Bird. It's a huge surveillance radar that can spot targets up to 600 clicks away. This is an early warning radar, the system that's constantly scanning for anything from giant bombers to small, fast-moving missiles. For those threats trying to sneak in low, like cruise missiles hiding behind the curve of the Earth, the S-400 can use optional mobile radar mass to peek over the horizon. Once the Big Bird spots something, it hands the target off to another radar, nicknamed the Gravestone, this is the fire control radar, and its job is to lock on to specific threats with incredible precision and guide missiles to them, even out to 400 clicks away. All right, next we've got the brains. So this is the mobile command post. This is the nerve center of the whole operation. All the information from those different radars get funneled right here, giving the operator a complete 360 degree view of the airspace. Powerful computers help sort and prioritize what's a threat and what isn't. And this is where a human commander makes the final call to engage. A single command post can keep tabs on up to 300 targets and engage three dozen of them simultaneously. And finally, you've got the fist, the mobile launchers, and the missiles they carry. The S-400 doesn't just use one type of missile. Instead, it has a whole family of them, each designed for a different job. This gives it a layered defense all in one package. For huge, high-value targets way out there like spy planes or air-to-air -air refueling tankers, it can use the 4-0 November 6 Echo missile, which has claimed a range of 400 clicks. For faster targets at medium ranges, like fighter jets, it uses the 4-8 November 6 series, which can reach out to about 250 clicks. And for the really close-in and agile threats like cruise missiles, it can fire smaller 9 Mike 96 family of interceptors. On paper, this flexibility is its greatest strength, and the ability to pick the right tool for any job, all from the same launcher. So now that we understand what the S-400 is and its key components, let's go ahead and break down the kill chain and how to get missiles in the air. So it all starts with the detection. The Big Bird radar is sweeping the sky, ping. It picks up an incoming aircraft hundreds of kilometers well. The data instantly flashes to the command post. Inside, the crew analyzes the contact speed, altitude, and direction to figure out what it is, friend or foe, a lumbering bomber, or a nimble fighter. Once they confirm its hostile target, the commander gives the order to engage. The system automatically picks the best missile for the target profile, and the launch command zips out to a specific launcher. That vehicle then fires, usually launching two missiles per target just to be sure. But the missile doesn't just fly on its own. 
It gets constant updates from the Gravestar engagement radar, which adjusts its flight path based on every move the target makes. Then, in the final heart-stopping moments, many of the S-400 missiles switch on their own onboard active radar, homing in for the final kill at speeds that can reach up to Mach 14 turning radar pings into wreckage. The entire sequence from the first radar ping to missile launch can happen as little as 10 seconds. So now let's look at the reality of the S-400. This is where the story gets a little complicated because on paper, the S-400 is an absolute monster. But in the real world, its combat record is a lot more mixed. Russia has placed the system in key strategic spots like Kaliningrad and in Syria, uh, where it acts as a powerful deterrent. But for the most part, it hasn't been truly tested against a full-scale coordinated attack by a modern air force. Its biggest test has been in Ukraine, and the results have shown some serious cracks in its invincible reputation. Ukrainian forces have repeatedly managed to hit and destroy parts of the S-400 battery, including those priceless command posts and radars. They've used weapons like the American-made ATACMS ballistic missiles and even older anti-ship missiles that were modified for the job. Reports from the front line have detailed successful Ukrainian strikes that have weakened Russia's air defense network in places like occupied Crimea. These attacks have proven that even with its anti-missile capabilities, the S-400 can struggle to defend against fast, sophisticated ballistic missiles and drone swarm attacks. Performance against low-flying drones and cruise missiles has also been a mixed bag. The system was mainly designed to counter threats at higher altitude and is less effective against threats that hug the ground to stay below radar. And yet, you can't deny the S-400's massive geopolitical impact. When Turkey, a NATO country, bought the system in 2017, it set off a political firestorm. The United States immediately kicked Turkey out of the F-35 stealth fighter program because they were afraid that operating the S-400 and F-35 together would give Russia a golden opportunity to collect data on the jet's stealth technology. That incident alone shows you how powerful the S-400 is as a political weapon. Even though there have been reports in 2025 suggesting the U.S. and Turkey might be trying to find a way through to resolve the issue, the damage was done. India also went ahead with its purchase and by 2025 had received several operating regiments. So what's the final word on the S-400? It's a weapon caught somewhere between its formal legend and a much more flawed reality. Its strengths are obvious. It's a mobile, flexible, layered air defense system with incredible reach and a theoretical power to take out almost any target. Its multi-missile approach is smart, and its big radar gives it a huge view over the battlefield. But now, its weaknesses are impossible to ignore. It's vulnerable to being overwhelmed by saturation attacks, where an enemy just throws more missiles at it than it can handle. Its ability to see low-flying targets is limited by the simple physics of the Earth's curvature, creating a blind spot that a smart enemy can exploit. And the most importantly, its performance in Ukraine has proven that it's not indestructible game changer like it says it is. It can be outsmarted. It can be destroyed. The system's real-world effectiveness ultimately depends on the skill of its crew and whether it's part of a larger integrated defense network with other systems to protect it. That's typically how IADs work. In the end, the S-400 Triumph is a truly dangerous and powerful weapon, but it's not a super weapon. It's more like a queen on the chessboard. High stakes, powerful piece in the game of modern warfare, but one that has a clear vulnerabilities that can be exploited. I hope you enjoyed the threat brief on the S-400. Go ahead and subscribe uh, for more intel breakdowns on weapons reshaping modern warfare. Uh, if there's a platform or doctrine you want decoded, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Sigma Actual, out.